Hey, how's it going guys and welcome back. So last week we put out a reaction video to Siggy Snake's video titled Gaming Isn't Fun Anymore. Link will be in the description. And today I wanted to sort of just give you guys my take on this surge of apathy that has been looming over modern gaming and why so many videos like this are popping up and resonating with so many people. Firstly, I'm gonna state this. I am referring to AAA gaming as opposed to the indie scene. And obviously there are exceptions to the cases in which we will be discussing today. But I also do wanna point out that if you're someone that's maybe a little younger and didn't grow up during the early 2000s and late 90s, you might not be able to relate to this video unless you've actually gone back and played some of these older games because a very common descending opinion whenever discussing any subject about something being better in the past versus now is typically that those reminiscing over a better time are generally just nostalgic and that's clouding their judgment. However, I do feel like in a lot of situations, this just isn't the case and there are actual tangible reasons as to why people feel certain ways towards new games, movies, or whatever medium they're discussing. This video isn't gonna be a super long essay, but instead we'll be diving right into the point and the reason that a lot of people feel this way, which does in many ways coincide with the point that Snake was making is the aggressive corporatization of the video game industry. Now, I'm not saying that wanting to make money on your video games is bad. In fact, when it comes to a lot of indie developers and games that have a lot of passion put into them, we wanna see these games sell well. This is rather the idea that a lot of new video games aren't being created with passion in mind, but rather specifically for monetization. It's one thing to create a game that you're really passionate about and you wanna put into the gaming sphere sort of as a work of art versus wanting to make a video game for the sole reason of getting as much money as possible. There is a scale that exists between making profit and wanting to make a good product. And in recent times, the video game industry has discovered that they could tip this scale in favor of monetization, whether it be through loot boxes, microtransactions, DLC that fixes a problem that was intentionally put into the game, etc. This is a commonly brought up point, but I cannot emphasize the magnitude of financial growth that comes with these systems that don't benefit the players in any way, but instead, development studios, or more commonly, the publishers behind some of these soulless projects. The example I'm referring to is FIFA making more money via its microtransactions, not even including game sales, versus the total yearly sales of Elden Ring. It says a lot that microtransactions make tons of money and video game studios are privy to this. FIFA is not even free to play, but if you look at free to play games, these are typically some of the highest grossing titles like Fortnite and Call of Duty Warzone, bringing in an insane amount of money via these monetization systems. And while one could argue that it's great that these games are free to play because more people are able to do so, a lot of these games give you very surface level enjoyment, unless you want to spend a ridiculous amount of money that would end up costing way more than a full game itself. Free to play aside, games also release a lot less finished nowadays and then market themselves as a live service so they can finish the game throughout the year. That way they can make money up front, make the monetization on top of that via their microtransactions and battle passes, and then choose to abandon the game if they don't pull in enough sales or continued support. A great example of this is how the free to play Warzone gets a lot more attention than Call of Duty Modern Warfare II and its multiplayer when the multiplayer is part of the $70 package, whereas Warzone is free. These games that used to release with anywhere from 12 to 16 maps, and sure they had DLC packs, which a lot of people didn't really like, but at least the base games were finished. They had all the modes that they needed, etc. Whereas now you see this new Modern Warfare game, which I call MWII because MW2 is better, releasing with only nine maps, and then in the recent season, they decided, oh, we're gonna add back in a beta map that we removed and a remake of a map we just remade last year as your season two content. Oh, and remember some of those other game modes that we didn't bring in at launch? We're gonna add that in as well. This even extends to single player games that release completely broken or missing key features only to add them in later as DLC. And let me just say that even if these games release this stuff later and it's free DLC, I still think it's unacceptable that games can release in such terrible states that they need constant patching in order to fix. This is what early access is for, or betas or alphas. This is not what a full product should be. But ultimately, let me drive us home to the title of today's video. If you're someone who buys into these monetization strategies, if you're someone who defends unfinished games and calls anybody who criticizes them a whiner or a baby or whatever, you're part of the problem 
you're the one contributing. And at the end of the day, as much as I hate this idea of shaming people to not play certain games, whether it be because you don't like the studio behind it or you don't like something about that IP, this isn't specific to any game. This is specific to essentially what is the majority of the AAA landscape right now. If you're out here buying these skins on top of paying for a $70 title that releases with these day one skins that in previous years would have just been unlockable items for free. If you're someone who's spending thousands of dollars on loot box mechanics, if you're someone who's totally fine with studios releasing terribly buggy games because eventually they'll be fixed, then you are speaking with your wallet and showing them that these games are fine the way they are because at the end of the day, if a lot of these development studios and publishers cared about the quality of their games, they would adhere to a lot of what reviewers are saying about them. And I'm not talking about these news journalists that are paid off or at the very least just are scared to say anything bad because they don't want to lose access to review copies. I'm talking about reviews from the actual community. Look how many people wanted Pokemon to keep the national decks. Do you think that they saw this and they were like, oh, you know what? Let's take the time to really flesh out the game because we absolutely could do that. No, they instead sold 200 back to you as DLC tied with some small post-game quests that honestly should have been part of the base game. Will the Call of Duty franchise start releasing fully finished games instead of messy lumps of code piggybacking off of the last title of the franchise? No, because their game still sells like hotcakes. This isn't an issue that is specific to one franchise. This is an issue that is widespread in the AAA sphere. And unfortunately, people are just buying into it and complaining with their voices, not their wallets. Now, I'm not perfect. I have bought into AAA games in the past. I don't buy many, to be quite honest. I'm pretty much only into indie games lately. But I bought the recent Call of Duty game, hoping that, you know, it was something different than what we'd seen in the last few years. Before this, the last COD game I bought was Black Ops 3, which in my opinion was pretty good, minus the loot boxes, which I didn't pay for any of. But we all contribute to this mess. But at the very least, if you don't buy the game's microtransactions, you will at least make a statement. I'm not saying to boycott all of these games outright, but at least stop buying $20 skins for your characters in a $70 game. Stop paying for loot boxes. Stop playing games that are pay to win because of the microtransaction systems. We as a community need to do better for the gaming scene. And right now, all of these people paying for card packs in FIFA or 2K or whatever, or contributing to whichever crummy monetization system exists are the problem. And those who defend these AAA studios are exponentially implicit. I've noticed so many parallels between the Call of Duty franchise and the Pokemon franchise recently. And while I wouldn't say that Pokemon has gotten as bad as COD when it comes to monetization, I will say that at least Call of Duty doesn't look like a game from 2002 with less content than a 3DS game, but I digress. My point is that the gaming community, whether you're a fan of monster taming games like we cover on this channel or a fan of first person shooters or whatever, you need to stop buying into these stupid monetization practices. I don't think that's asking too much. Asking everybody to boycott the next release of Call of Duty probably won't do anything, but making a conscious effort not to buy a $20 skin, I think is something that everybody can get behind. And yeah, if you're spending hundreds of dollars on games like this, you are part of the problem as much as I hate to say it. You also have the option of following different YouTube creators like myself if you're into monster taming games. Let's say the newest Pokemon game comes out, wait for the reviews, see what people have to say, and then decide with your wallet whether or not you want to buy these games. But again, if you're going to still buy them, at least don't pay for these DLCs and microtransactions without at least watching a content creator bite the bullet for you. That's what we're here for. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. Quick discussion. There's a lot more nuances to this. Like, I don't think all DLCs are bad if you release a full game and then a good expansion later. That's totally fine. But I'm sick and tired of people having to pay for in-game cosmetics and all this other crap that really doesn't benefit the player in any way. So let me know what you guys think. If you did enjoy the video, definitely consider subscribing. This channel chiefly focuses on what we call the monster taming genre, which are games not too dissimilar from Pokemon, but all have their own unique twists to that sort of formula like Digimon or Temtem or Monster Hunter Stories or Nexomon or whatever. You can also check out my Twitter and Discord linked below and my Patreon as well. Special thanks to the patrons, especially Jim Hamilton, Dro Ghost, Dark Persona, and Exodus, and we'll see you next time. Peace.